Before I dive into that blonde predicted tandem set that I just got, I thought I'd record a little video on this color Cape Heart TV from about 1985 that I found in the alley behind my place a couple weeks ago. I've already plugged it in, and you can see there's a little standby light on the LED display. So that's a good sign, and I am just going to turn this on. How about that? I had a feeling it would work just fine. Well, I mean, <laughs> turn on just fine. A, it's not all that old, and B, everything that I've ever found in the alley behind my place <laughs> works. My microwave, uh, various other TVs, the, in fact, the, 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 my main color TV, if you recall, I got a, on a Panasonic uh, about a year and a half ago. What happens is people just move, and when they move, they leave stuff behind because they don't want to take it with them. The greatest reception. But, huh, you know, I was about to say I have trouble getting this on all my TVs, but you know what? That Xena the Bug Eye set I was just working on we could receive this channel just fine just by me sticking my finger on the antenna terminals. And here I've got the telescoping terminals pulled out. Or, uh, the internal antenna pulled out to full extension. It's a crappy reception. So I figure I'll try hooking up a uh, over-the-air converter box and see if I can get a better picture. I was about to start hooking one of these up as I have to do with all of my vintage sets, but hey, this actually has cable input on the back. Let's see, it should be in channel three. Alright, look at that. Nice, clear, bright picture. Uh, Alright, so <laughs> that leaves me with a question of what do I want to do with this thing? I don't really need a color TV, but uh, I'll ask around with friends and family and see if anybody's interested. Um, a little color TV, I think it's a uh, 15 inch or thereabouts. It's too bad the control door is gone. Let's see, what kind of controls do we get down here? Some risks are obviously not risk taking. Oh, that's annoying without the control door. There's no labels on any of the knobs. Oh, so there's one way to find out, and that's just it. Well, it's not doing a whole lot. So, <laughs> better change the channel here, because since this is a black and white program, it'll be hard to tell if I'm adjusting tint or anything like that. Huh, I did not expect this TV to have vertical hold on the front like that. Might be brightness. Or that might be. This might be contrast. It's kind of hard to tell. Or maybe one's tint and one's brightness. That's color. Ah, this is tint or hue. Let's see that now. Seems like leaving all the controls in the center is the best thing to do. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. It seems like when you push it, it puts the TV in channel 2. Ah, that would be power. Oh, I see it. So that's standby. So if I turn this off, the uh, standby LED goes out. So I guess that's uh, perhaps a way to get rid of the... Uh, a little bit of power these sets run when they're in standby mode. Of course, I don't have the remote control for it. This might be a switch between cable mode and uh, antenna mode because I notice when it's out. I don't know. I don't know what the hell that is. So that's whenever I push it, the TV goes to channel 2. Maybe it's like. I don't know, reset. Uh, who knows, maybe one of you guys has some clue what that does. 
All right, well, I figure I might as well pop the back off this TV and let's uh, see what a TV from about 1985 looks like inside. I removed about half a dozen little screws from the back. Like so, two on top, two along the bottom, and a couple more here. And I think that will do it. Now something some of you guys had asked me about recently was how do you go about safely discharging stuff before you go poking around? Well, for sure, uh, I should say it's very likely that there's a nice high voltage kick on that CRT right now, so I'll show you how I discharge that. Generally, the caps down here as soon as very shortly after you turn the set off. The charge is blood off as the set powers down. But not on that high voltage cap. So what I do is take a long screwdriver, clip it to ground, and slide it under the cap and discharge the CRT that way. I suppose this will do ground strap that runs around the outside. Alright. And that's it. Now these can start building up a charge. Um, I forget what the exact uh, term is or the mechanism for that, but uh, after a few minutes it can still it can build a charge up again, but it won't be anywhere near as much as the initial charge, but it's not a bad idea to do this a couple times, especially for a much larger color uh, picture tube. The bigger the tube, basically, the more charge it will build up because the more surface area it has. Now, if you uh, are also concerned about any of the caps down here, the, like the main power supply, you can go ahead and discharge them with a screwdriver as well. Yeah, so let's take, take a closer look at what's inside here. Okay, so what have we got here? Let's start with the picture tube. It's a Chung Hua 370K SB22. They use a different numbering scheme in Asia than we have in the U.S. In the U.S., a uh, color tube would end with P22. This ends with a B22. And uh, in the U.S., the first two numbers indicate the screen size. So it would be like a 15 something something P22. So we got two circuit boards. Obviously, this is solid state. It even has a few integrated circuits. One big guy down there, and a few smaller ones. That might be for processing the infrared remote control signal. A little board up there has got some controls on it. Maybe the infrared receiver. Or no, that's probably up in there. A little dinky transformer down in there. I'm guessing the set uh, uses like a voltage doubler for the power supply, or maybe a switching power supply. Uh, at any rate, uh, it's transformer was. And there is the flyback. So there's a couple controls on here. Screen and. Let's see a label on there. Uh, focus. It's probably the horizontal output transistor driving the flyback. It's a big heat sink there. A little can down there. I think that's a saw filter. Surface acoustic wave filter. Sanyo can down in there. There's the tuner. It's 
There's IF stuff under that can. No, I don't work on solid state TV as much. That's why I'm just kind of guessing on a lot of this stuff. I'm sure if I'm wrong on some of this stuff, somebody's going to correct me in the comments. And that uh, might be some kind of filter. That's the cable input on the back. There's a metal can there leading to some coax that goes into the tuner. And there's probably a uh, uh, control the uh, the guns for uh, setting up the color. And on vintage ships, they have much larger boards for convergence and a whole bunch of pots, and they're usually up in here somewhere. All right, well, I guess that's going to be it. <laughs> I'll uh, put this set back together and make sure it still works, and then ask around and see if somebody wants it.